Hello, this is Darren DePaul, the voice of Emperor Valkorion, and you're watching another video by Valk. Greetings from Bulgaria, I'm Volk. Some of you may have stumbled upon my written or video guides in the past. My channel exists for over four and a half, nearly five years now, and the major part of it is coverage of Star Wars The Old Republic's content, guides, tutorials, gameplay, and all kinds of other videos. The written guide that you see on the screen is a beginner's guide which became quite popular at the end of 2017 because probably of the release of Star Wars The Last Jedi and uh, many players decided to check out what Star Wars games are available. Many veterans uh, felt the need to go back and re-experience some of their Star Wars uh, fun time. And uh, I decided to upgrade and add a little bit and pieces uh, uh, to the guide, which in this case is the user interface and menus um, section. While I was adding it, I realized that it would take me such a long time to do this in written form, so I decided to do a video. It is a video aimed at the very, very beginner players of Star Wars The Old Republic and actually beginner players for MMO games in general, because I'm going to take a deeper uh, look into as many of the details of the user interface, uh, modules, features, and menus available in the game for early on and low level characters. This is one of my god forgotten, god forsaken olds that even more my most loyal uh, visitors and subscribers have probably not seen or forgotten already. The first thing I want to talk about when you start the game is this flashing question mark icon. This is, by the way, the default user interface. Later on, I'll show you what other interfaces are available integrated into the game and how you can customize and create your own or install other people's user interfaces, such as my interface, if you decide you like it. Now, let's start with the new tutorial entries. When you click this, series of tutorials will open before you based on your level. Obviously, if you're level one, a lot more tutorials will be available and different content will be displayed here with different number of pages telling you what the game is about, how to move around with your characters, and it will also tell and show you some of the things that you're about to hear in this video, so there might be some mirroring here and there. But let's focus from top left going to the bottom right corner. Here you've got the small button that will toggle on and off the chat panel. The chat panel by default is this small and it features a general tab and others tab. Here you can see all kinds of different messages. You can change the size of the text. You can also uh, include or exclude some specific channels and groups of channels if you want to. Otherwise, the general will display pretty much all of the chat messages and information that you ever need. This little button here will allow you to make fun of your character, basically. Uh, do some dancing, do some emotes and things like that. The uh, little triangle here will toggle on and off the uh, information available regarding the number of players in the location. Currently, I'm in the Imperial fleet, so we've got 180-ish uh, people at the time of recording this video. Because I'm in a small old guild, I'm the only member available here. I will go through the guild window later on. And this is a notification of how many emails you have available. To access your emails, you need to visit a mail post and uh, download them from there and check them out. Now let's move on to the bottom center because this is probably the most interesting and most important part of your user interface. This is your character's avatar, the character level, name, and advanced class. Not long ago, Bow well actually it's now long ago, Bauer switched um, the progression and every character starting from level one is uh, tasked to pick one of two available advanced classes for the base class that they have selected. Here, on the left side, we've got the available buffs currently active on that character. If you mouse over any of the, 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 the buffs, you will see in the, top, in the bottom right corner a brief pop-up information, which can actually be detached. I'll show you that later on if I don't forget, and you can place it anywhere on the screen you like. You get uh, a brief information about what this buff contains and what exactly the benefits from the buffs are. If you have any debuffs, now if you don't know, buffs are positive effects applied to your character. They're usually temporary with specific duration. Sometimes they can be um, permanent, like the sprint. You can just toggle them off and on. If you want to deactivate an active buff, 
off, all you have to do is right click on the uh, icon and it will deactivate. In some specific isolated cases, you may not be able to deactivate a specific buff because it is required for the activity that you're currently performing. On the right side here, which is currently empty, you will be able to see any kind of negative effects applied to your character, such as burning effects, damage over time effects, and things like that. Dots and burns uh, are usually displayed here. On the right side, you have exactly the same avatar character level buffs and debuffs for your target. Now, at, at the moment, I'm targeting myself, so the information is exactly the same. The red bar is displaying your current HP or uh, how much life is left within your character before you die and you have to respawn. On the second row, currently, you see the uh, yellow or gold field bar. This is your resource. The different classes in the game have different kinds of resource management. Some of them actually don't have uh, any resource management at all. Usually the resource management allows you to use some of your special abilities because each one of them will require different amount of that spe specific unique resource to the character. Some of the characters deplete resources like this one and others are building it before special abilities are lit up and available to use. Moving on to the toolbars, there is only one displayed by default and for whatever reason you can switch here between the other two bars that you might want or need. This is extremely unfriendly and later I'll show you how to expand the two bars and have up to six if you're a subscriber or I believe up to four if you're preferred or free to play. The abilities that you can use are actually available in bright color, they're natural color. The abilities that you're currently not allowed to use for whatever reason will be marked with uh, well, dark grayish or grayed out is a popular term. These abilities can be moved by left clicking the mouse and just dragging them to another location. One, two, three, up to whatever number is by default. This is not the default, as you can see, R, T, F, and so on. These are custom um, key combinations and uh, key uh, mappings that I've done. These things are by default one through nine and then uh, zero minus equal and uh, you can map and change these as well. I have a very uh, long separate special video dedicated to key bindings for your keyboard and eventually for your mouse if you have a macro available uh, mouse with extra buttons on the side or anywhere else. Moving on to the very bottom part, you have this XP bar. Sometimes it can turn into a CXP bar, that is when you reach the level cap. At the time of recording the video, the level cap is 70, and it will turn into CXP. You're not allowed to earn CXP, which is command experience. Uh, that's probably not of interest to the very beginner player, so I'll skip it. The very bottom bar is your legacy. Legacy is a separate leveling process which goes from 1 to 50. Currently, the level cap of your legacy is 50. And it allows you to unlock various uh, boosts to your character or to your whole legacy. Which means to your other characters as well. I'm currently level 50, that's why you don't see any progress here. Because my legacy has been 50 for a very, very long time now. Moving on to the top right section, where you would see the mission tracker. You can toggle it on and off, and it will show the various currently available active missions that you're tracking, which means that these missions will display with brief objectives that you're uh, supposed to do. And uh, this little button will allow you to travel directly to the lo location of the mission. In the bottom right corner, you have the minimap with that pop-up, as I told you already, which can be detached through the um, editor for the UI. This little guy here is uh, for selecting your dark side or light side allegiances. This is probably not so interesting for the beginner players, but just let you, letting you know that it's actually here. And later on, you will be benefiting from uh, selecting dark side or light side. I do have special uh, written guide and a separate video. I'll hopefully link them in the video description to tell you more about the light versus dark uh, battle and uh, what can you earn by selecting side and supporting that side. On the minimap, you have a whole number of uh, buttons allowing you to access various windows, which some of them I will describe in more details later on again. You have a number of available toggle on and off buttons to display different things on the minimap. With the, the scroll of the mouse, you can zoom in and out to display 
bigger parts. You're always in the center of the minimap. And you can see in this case that there are a couple of vendors located nearby. <clears throat> Excuse me. From this little button here, you allow to change your um, difficulty settings for some of the missions that you're performing. You can also change to a PvP or PvE instance. And uh, in the very, very bottom corner of the screen, you see the current time, which is your local time. This is the, your local time, not server time, not um, bower time. This is the current time zone that you live in, which is really cool. Okay, the main menu bar is located by default on the top middle. This is the place where you will be able to access all kinds of features, menus, and tabs available in the game. We'll start off with uh, the first one, which is uh, the character sheet. There is a ton of information here, and it will probably be confusing if I attempt to explain um, all of the, the different statistics. You can take a look at any of my class guides when you're ready to read them, because when you're beginning the game, you probably don't care too much about what stats you have. At some point during the leveling process, you start wondering, do I need more mastery? Do I need more power? Or should I force more, um, focus more on crit and things like that? But that's not the purpose of today's video. In the bottom, you will be able to display, again, different set of statistics in those two little windows. On the big portion of the right side, you have the character display with all of the items that you are equipping currently. Some of the slots might be empty if you don't have any items uh, equipped there. Uh, this is your active outfit, and you have a number of slots that can and should be unlocked if you want to have alternative outfit, outfits, because the game does allow uh, outfitting your character, which means um, decorating them with gear that is only there to change their appearance. It doesn't affect their performance. The performance of the character is always only affected by the stats inserted in these uh, slots here in the main um, in the main character slot. Here you have a number of slots available to modify your personal starship, which is only ever required and needed if you decide to do those uh, tunnel vision solo space missions available from your personal uh, starship. This is something pretty much nobody ever does, because if you want to do space or space PvP, you would probably focus on Galactic Starfighter available in the game, not on these um, uh, Railroads uh, solo missions. However, they're fun and they can provide you with some interesting rewards and experience gain, of course. Continuing, continuing, excuse me, with the next, which is your inventory here, you can expand it. I believe by default, every player starts with only two bars or three bars of inventory space, and you can expand with uh, spending in-game credits or real-life money in the form of cartel coins. The inventory has two additional tabs for mission items where you would be uh, storing all of the unique items you're picking up that are related to active missions you're performing. And here is the currency tab, which will be a lot more populated once you start um, approaching the end game and you start uh, collecting different kinds of uh, resources. The amount of cartel coins you have is listed at the very top. What is also interesting here to mention about the inventory is right here you would have a couple of additional buttons. If you have any crafting professions, we'll take a look at the crew skills window in a moment. Uh, currently, my character doesn't have any crew skills available because I haven't picked up any of them, which means I don't have these buttons. But these will be buttons available, uh, allowing you to reverse engineer special items. You just click the button, then click the item that can be reverse engineered uh, based on your active crew skill and you'll get some special crafting materials and some other rewards from reverse engineering these things. In the bottom left corner, you have access to your collection, which is a huge um, window separating in different categories all kinds of uh, collectibles that you can have from the game. Most of them are related to the cartel market, which is the in-game store available in Star Wars The Old Republic. In the very bottom right corner of the inventory, you see the amount of credits, which is the in-game currency you're collecting and spending for various uh, upgrades, purchasing new gear, traveling from one point to another, and pretty much everything else. 
The next one is abilities. Here you have a list of all of your currently learned and available to learn abilities. The ones that you haven't learned, if you're a subscriber, you can visit the trainer and learn them for free. I'm not really sure if at the moment free-to-play players have to pay credits to learn them or maybe Bioware remove that for everybody. You have to help me out, those of you who have the knowledge for it and watching the video. Thank you very much, by the way. Leave a comment in the comment section to help others uh, learn this as well. If you're wondering what this ability does or what kind of ability it is, you can check the um, right section of the window and it will tell you if the window, if the ability is passive or active. It will tell you also what kind of ability it is. It can be a force ability, which is the yellow text displayed in force, uh, of course, uh, for this character because it's a force user character. Uh, if it's yellow text, it's a special force ability, or I believe the other term was tech ability. Hmm, it's escaping my mind at the moment. And this is all I would say about the abilities. The combat proficiencies is where you would select one of the three available disciplines to your character. And I do have a detailed guide and overview about disciplines, so I'll not go in too much detail what these things are. On the left side, you see the abilities that you get automatically rewarded you as you progress through your levels. And on the right side, you get a specific number of utility points that you can spend Based on your level, you would have a different number of utility points. And there are also requirements what and how many of these specific boosts to your characters that you can select. For example, if you want to progress and pick some utilities uh, from the Masterful, you would need to spend at least two points uh, in the Skillful section. Uh, furthermore, you need to spend four points in total. It doesn't matter where you spend them uh, for the Heroic. You can spend four in the skillful and you would still have unlocked uh, the heroic points and so on and so on these buttons below here would be active or uh, deactivated based on what kind of legacy perks and legacy unlocks you have and um, at the moment as you can see i haven't unlocked all of them this here button will allow you to see the what Bioware considers, and in most cases they are correct, the most important key abilities for the discipline. Here you can see that this character I'm currently displaying for you has a heal discipline and two damage disciplines available. The next, yeah, that's an annoyance. The next one is the legacy. This is where you can benefit from having higher legacy level as I've, as I've told you legacy levels with you regardless of what kind of activities you do with your character or characters you always level up your legacy it goes much much slower compared to your normal character level progression and you would usually need I would say at least three or four characters basically leveled up uh, properly before you actually have a level 50 legacy uh, for all of your characters. Uh, in the legacy window, you are allowed to pick some specific uh, boosts that are per character, which means if you unlock them on this character, they will have to be unlocked again on other characters. All of these items are locked behind certain requirements. You can unlock them with credits and with... Um, specific legacy level as well. In the reputation window, you can see how you're faring against the different factions that you would encounter in the game and performing missions for them will allow you to gain their trust and uh, the higher reputation you have with them, the different kinds of rewards you would be receiving and uh, the reputation vendors will be uh, willing to sell you different things. For the global unlocks, we have the Imperial characters' benefits, the Republic classes' benefits, uh, the species uh, information with um, a little bit more details as you mouse them over. These are global uh, unlocks for all of your legacy, which means when, when you, once you unlock any of these, uh, they will be unlocked for any of your currently existing and new characters created on the same server, which means on the same legacy. Legacies are different per server, but once you transfer a character from one server to another, the legacy travels with that character. Here is the um, legacy Datacron uh, collection, because once you do the Datacrons on one character, you have to you don't have to do them on all of the other characters. Long-time returning veterans might find this feature very interesting and useful. 
Family tree is where you can create your role-playing connections between all of your characters if you want to. It's not necessary. It doesn't have any real benefits. And the achievements window will tell you how much of each activity available in the game you have completed. It's, it's separated in many, many different categories. I think I have to probably speed things up because otherwise this video will be two hours long. The activities window is arguably the most interesting window in the whole game currently. It has been introduced with the latest patch at the time of recording the video 5.6, of course. And I do have a dedicated separate video for it describing which one, uh, every one of, uh, each one of these tabs uh, do for you and what kind of activities you can find. Basically, every solo and group activity is available here based on your current character level, allegiances and everything else. For endgame players or approaching endgame players, this might be interesting. This is where you can play and replay the chapters from Knights of the Fallen Empire and Knights of the Eternal Throne, the two latest story-driven expansions to Star Wars The Other Public. The command stash is where you will be earning at level 70 uh, the command crates, which will be rewarding you with random crap. This is the dreaded loot box system available in Star Wars The Other Public. Well, one of the loot box systems, because the cartel market is filled with loot boxes as well. The mission log is where you would keep track to all of your current missions, how you are progressing through them, and so on. You can reset, abandon missions, share it with other players if you, have, if you are grouped with them, or you can track and untrack it here. You can also track and untrack by just clicking on the gold round button over here and add or delete more missions to this drop menu. The Conquest is something that I'm personally not participating in, but it's mostly guild activity. And again, every different week you have a chance to earn various rewards. If you participate together with your guild, you have absolutely no chance uh, to succeed in the Galactic Conquest in Star Wars The Old Republic if you're not part of the, of the big Conquest-focused guild. Uh, but there are different kinds of rewards for winning the conquest every week. And as you can see, many guilds are uh, participating and uh, fighting. The last panel or tab is the codex. Here you will gain um, access to absolutely all of the lore updates and bits and pieces of interesting information that you're collecting as you progress through the game. Moving on to the next one, we've got the, uh, the uh, Companions and contracts, Contacts window. Here you will have all of your currently active and past active Companions listed. You will be able to see the influence that you have with them. The higher influence, the better your Companion is performing. And from this little button, you can summon the Companion. You can choose them from here to be a healer, tank, or anything else if you want them to be. I can very quickly uh, eventually summon a Companion yes. by default. The small user interface for the companion will be available here. This button means that the companion oh, wants to talk to me. If you want to talk to them, you usually have to go to a quiet area such as a cantina or on the Republic fleet or in your personal starship. In most cases, they wouldn't be willing to talk to you in the middle of a fight. Uh, the companion UI features many similar um, elements like the main uh, HUD for your character. From here, you can see the current role that your character is performing. The current level of your companion is matching your character's level always. This is the avatar, the HP bar, the buffs. There will be debuffs if any are active. And clicking with the right, right mouse button, you can active, activate and deactivate or toggle on with the left mouse button and toggle off uh, the various abilities that you have. Quick advice, turn off the last one if your character is healing because it's not a good one. <laughs> Let's move on to the next. The Stronghold user, user interface shows you all kinds of different information and um, useful, I don't know, features for your strongholds. Whether you want to purchase a stronghold or manage your own stronghold or travel to it, you can do it from this menu. The next one is the crew skills. Again, if you have available any crew skills, and I do have them available, but I haven't leveled them up. Currently, the level cap for the crew skills is 600. You level up crew skills by uh, um, crafting things for your crafting profession or gathering things as you travel around the planet, killing mobs, just looting things on the ground. You would be leveling up the gathering professions uh, for your character. You can have 
up to one crafting skill and up to three gathering skills. But in total, you can only have three crew skills all together. So you can have one plus two or zero plus three, and that's the idea. Here is a quick overview of the different uh, elements available to the different crew skills, what you can do. In this case, you can see that I have three gathering skills. That's why earlier on I told you why I don't have the reverse engineer available here, because I don't have a crafting profession. To be able to reverse engineer items in your inventory, you need to be a crafter. And I'm currently only a gatherer. Gathering can be done by just looting stuff on the ground as you play or sending your companions to missions. And these are the missions available here based on your grade and level with the crew skill. We can explore the galaxy map, world map and the codex. Let's explore very quickly and briefly the galaxy map. This is one of the best additions to the game. Unfortunately, it's a little bit laggy and tough. <coughs> excuse me, to navigate sometimes. In the bottom right screen, you can see which one of the dark light of the dark side or light side is currently winning. And during the winning stage, you will be able to profit from some spe uh, special and unique rewards. Uh, this is related to the small buttons out here I told you about earlier, but this is only, well, not only, but it's primarily for higher level players, which are more interested into these uh, features of the game. The world map is displaying the map of the location that you're currently in. As I told you, I'm currently on the VIP section on the fleet, and that's what you are seeing. You can uh, activate or deactivate various uh, useful tips and uh, tidbits here on the left side. You can use a magnifying glass if you have trouble seeing something. Uh, you can also uh, decide to show or not show the exploration missions, which are the uh, so-called side missions or bonus missions that you don't necessarily need to complete in order to progress with your main character story or with your uh, planetary story arc. And the last one is the codex, which I showed you earlier from the log tab. This is the same place where you saw the missions, conquest and the codex at the very end. Moving on to the social, you can check out how many friends you have. Unfortunately, you have to add them for each character separately, which is why I stopped doing uh, and updating my friends list like four years ago. It's very tedious and boring process. In the guild tab, you will be able to see who is online as well as uh, brief information about their characters. Uh, you can show online and offline members here. In the bottom right corner, you see guild benefits such as reputation bonus gain and experience bonus gain for your character. The next one is the system menu. It allows you to access the preferences, which is a very big menu. I'm just going to quickly scroll through it without being able to tell you uh, in much detail what is available and why here, because the, the video will really span into the two hours uh, limits if I start doing this. For the customer service, I really wish for you to never have to use it, but if you want to ask the customer service something or report a bug, that's where you do it from. Uh, here you can see uh, qu uh, quickly again the tutorials that you have. You can open them from here for the first time again, and they will keep popping up until, I don't know when exactly they would stop, but throughout the the whole leveling process probably for your first character it will be uh, happening this will keep popping up interface editor is the most fun part where you can move edit uh, delete or I don't know enhance many or most of the user interface elements this is where you can create your absolutely unique user interface it's also ac accessible from this little plus and going open interface editor and lastly it's also available when you hit escape and goes into the interface editor i can very quickly show you the user interface that i'm currently playing with and i have been playing with this for a very long time this is my preferred style of user interface, and it's available for download if you want to use it and uh, enjoy it on my website. There should be, I hope, if I don't forget, a link to it in the video description as well. The last one is if you want to log out. If you log out, this means you're ready to stop playing. This gold cartel market sign allows you to access the cartel market collections and the pack explorer 
The cartel market is this. It's the in-game store where you would be able to purchase for real life money in the form of cartel coins, anything. Thankfully, the cartel market is like 98% decorations and only 2% worth of uh, pay-to-win items. And they're only halfway pay-to-win, but I don't want to get into that discussion right now. If you want, ask me in the comments and I'll tell you what I think. I'll link you to a couple of videos that I've done in the past related to uh, the items in the cartel market. This is the collections window that we've seen earlier. And this is the pack explorer, which is related to packs you're purchasing from the cartel market. When and if you purchase any of the packs, you would see them on the left side. On the right side, you will be able to see the contents of the packs that you have opened. And I believe with this, we are pretty much done. Hopefully, you found this video useful. If you're a very new player to the game, I would be more than happy to assist and help you with whatever questions you may have. Ask them in the comments below. Check out all the links included in the video description. And if the comments start expanding, I might actually add more links to answer various questions in the comment section. So please be mindful. Always take a look at the comments and uh, make sure that your question hasn't been asked already. If it has, I would be willing to answer it again. That's no problem. Thank you, guys. Remember to leave a like on the video because obviously if you're reaching this point, wow, half an hour, uh, half an hour mark already, you have obviously enjoyed it. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, do that because it will allow you, especially if you turn on the bell icon to see all kinds of uh, video activities and live stream uh, notifications as I'm uploading or going live. See you next time. Bye-bye. Thank you for watching. I hope you have enjoyed the video.